The Cube presents HPE Discover 2022. Brought to you by HPE. Hi everybody, we're back. This is theCUBE's coverage of HPE's Discover. Big Discover event this year, 2022, in Las Vegas. We're at the, what used to be called the Sands Convention Center, now the Venetian. Dave Vellante for John Furrier. Pradeep Kumar is here. He's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of HPE's Point Next Services, where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> services is where it's at. That's, that's where the value <laughs> is, right? <laughs> It's, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. It's great to see you again, man. Thanks for coming on. Okay. Welcome, John. Hope you all are having a good time. Cool. Yeah, it's very Excellent. nice to be. Great. Listen, always great to be face yeah. to face. Yeah. Right. There's nothing yeah. like it. Yeah. 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 You know, we we slogged through two years of virtual and it was packed. You know. A keynote. Antonio's keynote was jam packed. Overflow rooms. Yeah. Um, and it was a big room. It wasn't a small room. It was huge. So yeah. that's a sign. Yeah. People are here. Good times. Yeah. People love to be here. Yeah. So what's the update with with Point Next? It's a uh, lot's happening, <laughs> lots happening, right? Uh, the transformation is underpinned by Point Next doing the right thing and just uh, transforming and helping customers to transform themselves as well. With the pandemic, it just caught on, right? Everybody yep. wants to do things faster, digitize things faster, and uh, we really bring the technology and the expertise. I think that's this pretty. You know, what what are the? How do you think about success rates <clears throat> with transformations? On the one hand, it it kept the industry going, all industries going. On the other hand, I feel like a lot of the transformations were rushed. I call it the forced march to digital. Yeah. Yeah. What failures did you see in that forced march and, and how are companies course correcting? Yeah, really good question, <laughs> Dave. Um, more than half of the transformations fail, right? So there was a BCG study done over 3,000 customers over three years around the world and um, 57% of the transformations failed, right? In the sense, when somebody start to transform, they, they set out a set of goals, scope it, this is what it is. They either didn't meet the goal, or they spent more money than they should have, or they overshot the timing, right? Or all of this about. So it's a staggering number. Uh, a large piece of them fail, yeah. right? So um, to answer your second question, Dave, so what are we finding out? Why are they failing and what are they, how are they course correcting? I think there's sort of, you know, we speak to customers all the time, so we get an idea of, you know, what's working and what's not working. And there's sort of three things that keep on coming up, right? One is uh, senior management, CEO, CIO, commitment to the North Star, yeah. right? Hey, are we tied in? Are we doing this? The second thing is the, um, the alignment between IT and the business and the functions, right? If you don't agree on the goal set, if you don't agree on the timeline, uh, then it just, you know, don't work. <laughs> the third is expertise. The people underestimate the expertise you need, the discipline you need to get stuff done, right? And uh, so these are the three, and none of them are technology related. Yeah. I mean, you heard. They're all people-related stuff. Right. Pradeep, I want to get your thoughts on this. This is a, sure. a really important point. I love that commentary because what we're seeing as well is that with COVID, now we're kind of third year post-COVID, if you will, yeah. or just getting out of COVID, it caught a lot of people flat-footed. So people who were on a digital transformation either got stuck and fell down or failed, or they had a tailwind going into it and had momentum. They had alignment and they were filling gaps. They kind of crossed over at the right point and could yeah. succeed yeah. during the pandemic. But many people failed yeah. because yeah. they didn't prepare. They didn't have the technology. They had too many gaps. They had antiquated old stuff. What have you learned? Because this has now ignited the services business because no one wants to have that happen again. Yeah. Can you share your experiences with that, with the customers that are going through that learning pain? What are their core issues? Some projects got doubled down on, some got killed. Hey, we don't need that anymore. So what, what are the learnings? Tell, share us yeah. your perspective, because this is important. Yeah, so people want to do transformation, right? Absolutely, because it's a must. With COVID, faster, quickly, you want to get but they also have to run the business because otherwise you don't have the EPS to support the transformation, right? So it's, it's transform and perform. So we call it within HP, perform yeah. while you transform. And people who got that balance right, 
created that flywheel, John. Don't right? run out of gas. In other words, translation. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. So, so second thing is, so you have a set of people. You have expertise yeah. and COVID, you started losing people, great resignation, you heard everything. Then you are trying to balance your people between, do you put them on transformation or do you put them on operating the stuff? This is where companies then now are realizing, hey, if I put my best guys on transformation, I need to make sure this operations work well. So people are coming to us and saying, hey, yeah. could you operate this one well, right? I mean, today we had somebody on stage, uh, in low Medical, right? They, um, they got a ransomware hit. And they had been using us um, to do all the operations. And when it hit, we were like switched on. They're like, I mean, on stage, they're like, you guys were golden, took care of the situation. So if you didn't have any extra help of some expertise, then you're really suffering, right? Yeah, we heard this too from partners. We heard during the pandemic, a lot of the partners stepped up, the channel partners and yeah. the ISV yeah. partners, yeah. because they could. Yeah. And that was another key point. Yeah. It all comes together. I love the perform and transform, Dave, because this is about running the business because you have cybersecurity is a serious problem right now. Yep. That's also part of the transformation. Yep. Where's the overlap? What are the areas that you're seeing where you got to operate and transform? Where's the hot zone, so to speak, with yeah. customers? Is it cyber? Is it is it uh, data? Data. I would say clearly data is number one, right? In anything now, data, data modernization is the key. Otherwise, you are not changing your company the way you do things. So we just announced for real big stuff addressing uh, data migration, right? Um, one of the problems that people have is quality of data. Quality of data is not good. They exist in silos. Mm -hmm. It's not in a platform form where you can really take the data, get the insights, and use it for your future, right? I mean, that's a key problem, right? Yeah. So you, you hire a few data scientists, they come in, they're, doing, they're spending the time on housekeeping data rather than actually yeah. doing data science. Data right? engineering, not just wrangling, it's a lot of engineering going on. Absolutely, Okay. absolutely. So that's Go a well-known problem. Uh, but as you said before, the, it's not really a technology problem. <clears throat> I think it's an organizational issue. And part of the problem, and I wonder if you're seeing this within your customer base, is this idea that we're going to try to put everything into some kind of central repository, yeah. and then we're going to create a hyper-specialized team that is the go between the data that you need and, and the insights, right? Yeah. Uh, to get the insights. And we're seeing this dispersion of the expertise, which put, putting more responsibility into the line of business, a new data architecture, new organizational thinking, are you seeing that? Are there particular I industries where that's happening more, more quickly, where the context, which la is lacking in the centralized team, is actually going out to the lines of business where the data quality will be inherently improved? Yeah, I think it's like implementing ERP systems. I mean, people who try to <laughs> create massive data lakes, I don't think it's going to work, right? Because it's like, Nobody has the time to wait for three years until you have structured data in a particular way. The other thing is, some of the data companies, Vertica, people like that who came in are no more because things are changing at a rapid pace. So anything, if you're doing, that's taking too long to get your act together, the market has moved on, you may not be even in that business. So what people are doing, Dave, is sort of microservices, they're cutting it into pieces and saying, let me get the best fast, quick, and make it work. And then creating the flywheel of changing other things that are priority for their So they're customers. getting tactical with their with Absolutely. Their and, and Absolutely. getting quick wins. Absolutely. And biting Absolutely. Off smaller well, that's the data, the data thing is a cyber problem too, because data is helping cyber, but machine learning feeds off data. Yes. So if you have gaps or blind spots, machine learning isn't as good. So machine learning is only as good and the AI is only as good as the data it yeah. can see. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that means it's got to be fast, available, not siloed, so, but you, so this is a balance. What do I silo and protect for compliance? Yeah. And what can I address quickly, low latency? Yeah. If I may awesome. add, John, the other thing is, because there's so many buzzwords used in the industry, right? Um, and AI ML is one of those, right? So everybody then, businesses, 
pick up an area for AI and ML. They do a little pilot, they do a POC, and it works well, and they're extremely happy. <laughs> and then they try to scale it across the whole enterprise, yeah. and it's a complete failure because most of the time it doesn't work. Well, right? you, your data lake comment actually <laughs> translates over to your point there because you can spend, I had a quote on uh, the last event I went to, the quote was, we spend all of our time trying to figure out what the latest open source machine learning is. That's a full-time job. So the data lake is heavy lift, just to understand what's going on there. Yeah. Tracking machine learning yeah. is a full-time yeah. job, even, and it Absolutely. changes. Absolutely. So the, the change, what yeah. does that mean to the customer? Managed services are going to be part of it. How did the customers tame that moving train that's happening around these really important areas? Yeah, so um, I think um, customers do need help. So I think they need to be open to ideas of, okay, what is the expertise we need for where we want to get to? And some may be available inside, some they need to go for help outside. I mean, that's a reality, right? So you need to open your eyes and say, I've got, let me put my best people, maybe on transformation. Let me take the people with some expertise knowledge on different things, right? Mm -hmm. And short-sighted companies, what they do is, John, they just automate what's their current. And that's not a transformation. In the end, you look back and say... That's incremental. Exactly. Barely, you barely. Didn't, you didn't achieve anything, right? Because you haven't transformed your processes, you haven't changed the thing. You just automated what the garbage in, garbage that, out, it's the right. same crap that comes out. So, Andy, How much of the work that Point Next does is, um, I'll, I'll say, you know, consultative in terms of be, being that change agent, right? Because again, we back think about data. Yeah. A lot of it is is thinking about the organization. Yeah. Decentralizing, you know, making that decision, uh, thinking in different terms around data products, um, having the lines of business maybe take more responsibility for end to end. Those are internal decisions. Yeah. And they have, the customers have, certainly have a lot of expertise around it, but they sometimes need a change agent. Do you play that role? Is that a, a GSI that plays that role? Yeah, so uh, it's a mixed bag. Uh, we play the role in some places, and then uh, some SIs would also play, play that role. Okay. Um, more of the point next is, if, if you take a customer engagement, advisory, professional services, then actually maintaining their landscape and then manage services, which again, sort of you monitor, but you also provide some info on how to manage it, right? In those three pieces, Dave, the top piece and the bottom piece are the big pieces customers want expertise on. The middle piece is getting automated because systems are getting smarter, they are self-healing, and in the middle piece, what people want is knowledge. So say, for example, you have an enterprise, it's not working well, they wanted knowledge up front. Tell me where it's broken or what do we need to do? And that's it, right? Um, and they want to fix it themselves. It's just like consumer, right? So um, that's the way it's working. So the reason I ask that is we're having a data discussion here, yeah. and, and I think that <laughs> a big role that you can play in the yep. data transformation is to provide self-service infrastructure. Yes. Uh, right, where the, the technical pieces are an operational detail. Absolutely. Okay, and then the, the second is, and you just touched on it, is, is, is automated, automated governance yeah. and security. So that when I share data, I know that it's going to the right place, that individual has the proper access to it. So those are two sort of white spaces, I think, in a lot of organizations where they need help. Big white spaces, actually. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. And that, that middle, please, is a complete cloud experience, mm -hmm. right? Everything is going to be digitalized, everything's going to be automated, and um, so, you know, people can use it any way they want. Do you right? see hybrid as a steady state? I mean, we've got to wrap up, we don't have a lot of time left. Yeah. But real quick, hybrid, we've been saying here on theCUBE, it's, it's going to be a steady state for a long, long time. Absolutely, absolutely. And it would be, you know, on-prem, off-prem, multi-cloud, 
but it's going to be hybrid world. <laughs> All right, hybrid Pete world. Mara, hybrid thank cube. you so much. <laughs> hybrid, hybrid cube. cube. <laughs> hybrid cube. <laughs> it's always great to have you on. You're so articulate, yeah. and, and it's just yeah. wonderful to see you. Thanks. For, thanks. For yeah. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Dave. Thank and, you. John. And thank you for watching, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. We'll be back with the Cube's coverage of HPE Discover 2022 in Las Vegas right after this short break. We're live. <laughs>